News Channel. Okay, hey, welcome back once again to Stu's channel. Yes, ha <laughs> the Slick 3D 480. This is an E-Flight product. Uh, I am looking forward to this. Let's take a look. Okay. Oh, that's just padding. That's what that is. Here's the cow inside of its nice padded environment. Very nice. It's got a form keeper. The cowl is nice. It's it's sweet. Look at this. So there's the cowl. This is how nice this is going to be. You can't get this. I'm sorry. With foam, you're not <laughs> going to get this. She is a beauty. Nice. All right. Let's take a look at the wing very nice very sweet it even smells good beautiful beautiful Absolutely beautiful. Beauty. Absolutely gorgeous. This thing is so light, it's ridiculous. Just very light. A little close-up action. Look at how beautiful this is. Absolutely beautiful. And, of course, there's one last thing in the box. Let's take a look. This must be the side force generators. It's that small. Off gear. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's open this thing up and take a look. I have put all of the remaining, uh, the wings, the fuselage, everything else, back in their perspective bags that's very nice that's nice and light it is it is glass it's sweet uh, of course there's another one there just like it and of course inside here some hardware and two side force generators Alrighty, welcome back once again to Stu's channel. So I have gone through the book and there is nothing unusual or different or anything for myself to learn from at this point. I always like peeling into, um, you know, some instructions. Like, for example, when I built the rifle one meter and at that point began to trust the technology of Amazing Goop, Shoe Goo, E6000, and that sort of thing. Uh, before that time, I didn't trust that uh, sort of material. Other people did, and of course, um, they were right. Uh, here we are with a typical build, uh, nothing strange. Uh, I can tell you that as you read the instructions, you're going to discover some things that um, it's always this way. Uh, either they are assisting you in learning how to build planes uh, Because you know even building an ARF you're starting to learn the skills You know as I was building different ARFs there were ARFs in which I had to go and Create my own slots. So I got a slaughter. I had to line up everything There's been planes where I've had to do the balls of the skin the whole bit Everything that's a kit <laughs> completely Doing it all, but an ARF is a good learning uh, experience because even though you're not building all of this, even though you're not gluing sticks together and doing the measurement, which by the way is a lot of work, it's fun, but it is time consuming. And then getting to the last part where you have to put the covering on, and that's where I think a lot of people get really frightened by the cover. They don't realize, hey, you know what, if you screw up, you can do it again, it's not that big of a deal. 
Uh, a lot of people get hung up on this, like, oh my, I don't know, I don't know. And it's far easier than most people think. Well, here we are again, and uh, the instructions will tell me to remove this aileron so that I can install this horn. And you know, and they also tell me that I need to tape all of this off so that I'm only going to put some, <laughs> some epoxy into this little section here so that it's only in this little section. I am not going to do that. I am not going to remove my, since my uh, hinges are already done and I can see the front of these as I look down in, in here, you can see the hinges. You see the tip of that hinge right there? I know that that's about the halfway marker. There's really no reason for me to go and dig hinges out. So here we go. This has to be, of course, scratched up. And of course, we're going to do your favorite thing here in a minute. And that is, yes, you got it. Mixing up some epoxy together, just like the old days, just like our good times we've had together. <laughs> so I'm going to scuff this up. It's just to make sure that the, the epoxy has something to stick to. All right, let's do this. Here's our good times together right here. <laughs> A Stew's Channel Classic. Yes, mixing up our five-minute epoxy. Oh, good times. Okay, this isn't going to take much. I can tell you that. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I have not glued... The ailerons on. I have not set the CA, the ultra thin CA, into those, and I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to take the chance. And the chance that I'm referring to is the chance of having an accident with this right here, which is probably why they have you separate this. If you have an accident with your, <laughs> with this right here, and you have accidentally uh, secured those, your accident is going to be um, a big one. It's going to be one that's going to involve <clears throat> some dismantling. More than likely what will happen is you'll have to cut your CA hinges off and then you will have to <laughs> fix this mess that you've made and then re-slot to put in new CA hinges. Hopefully you have some um, available. I do, but I don't plan on making that mistake. Why do you mix that up so much, Stu? What's the deal? I am going to mix this. It's epoxy. You want it mixed up. Hopefully I'm not jiggling you around. And I'm not. So here we go. We're going to take this epoxy. And we're going to drip it into this hole. Check it out. There's that. Now, we're going to take this horn. We're going to put the horn in. Okay. I'm going to take my alcohol. Yes. Take my alcohol. And I'm going to take the excess off. Come on, we've done this together. Remember these good times we had together? There's one side that's done. There's going to be another side. 
and yeah, I'm rotating this this uh, paper towel. I'm rotating it around. I do not want any residue. Make no mistake. You know, they have you tape this thing off. I'm making sure that you're not going to see a single bit of residue. Nothing. And yeah, it's might be, you know, you might be wasting paper towels and you might be wasting some alcohol on here, but you know, your finish is just going to be absolutely beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, this uh, has been cleaned up and I'm going to take my tea. And there it is. It's absolutely straight using this right here. Um, you know the deal on this. This isn't done. It's five minute epoxy. I am not going to attempt, I could attempt to use this on the other wing. Um, I'm not going to because I've got to get the other wing out of its packaging, etc. So this stuff is just going to have, it'll just dry up. All right, so hey, these are dry. Um, at this point, I've got to put on these side force generators, and that involves making some threads and then hardening those up. I wanted to back up a bit because I know that maybe some of you have watched me build before, um, like the shoestring, um, that Viper Jet from Hobby King, some of those other planes. Um, You'll remember that I would drill, if I take this off, and you can look in here, I would drill a hole directly into this right here. I would drill a hole on either side. That was back before I started using <laughs> ultra thin CA. Your CA needs a place to travel and that provides a channel for it to go. Uh, that's why I'm not having to do that here. Once I put that ultra thin in, it's going to go into all every. It's going to go past everything. It will not require a channel whatsoever. It's just going to take off and run. So at this point, this is really simple. I'm just going to kind of show you what I'm doing, and then uh, move on to the next step. I'm going to make threads here. I'm like, what do, you, what do you mean make threads? There's just, there's nothing here. So what I've got to do is I've got to create some threads. This is just wood. And as I do this, keeping it as straight as possible, I need a larger screwdriver. So here we go. What I've got to do here is simply create some threads. So, take a screw. And start the project here, start the hole. Once these are done, you know what I'm going to be doing after this, right? It seeps so much that I'm going to be able to put this on this, just on the edge of this little hole here, and it's just going to soak right on into everything, and I'm not going to end up with this big glob of CA on the inside of my wing. There's a couple drops. In fact, I could lift it up. There you go. Done. I harden that up. Let this dry. I don't need to put on any uh, accelerator on this. And then I attach my side force generators. Okay, we're down to the point where the CA is set up and we're going to put on a side force generator.
It should be snug, not overly done. If you've overly done it, you're going to end up with wrinkles. There we go. Do that. Nice and even. Any wrinkles that you do get, you can always do what we did on that Dago Red and iron those things out. This is nice. It's on. The thing here is I've got to be able to... This is why you didn't want to glue these in. You don't want to glue those CA hinges in because realistically we're going to have to check clearance here. We're going to have to go over here and take a look to see how close we can get to that edge without touching it in either direction. Rima. Now, in the instructions, it will tell you to use a number 11 blade as your spacer. If I lift this up and slide this number 11 in here, which is... All my blades are number 11s. And carefully not to cut your own uh, CA hinge. That would not be good. Okay, there's a space. This stuff just sucks up in there. It just goes right in. Now, don't add too much. If you add too much in here, you're going to have troubles on the top side of this wing. You're going to end up with residue running down the, the, the crease of this wing right here. It'll start oozing out the bottom. This is the top side of the wing. You're applying it on the bottom. If you add too much, you're going to have drips. What you might want to have on hand, just in case something happens, let's say you're screwing up. Uncure. This will get rid of that in case you make a mistake. All right, here we go with the second wing. We're going to make sure we've got the space up here. The very end. We've got to make sure we have that space. Very close, but it has space. Come back with our blade for spacing purposes. Pull up a little bit, slide the razor in. Okay, there's one that's very good. That's good. Make sure I'm not cutting anything. Yeah, that would be bad. Spacing is set up, and you can eyeball it before you do it. Then you go straight into the application. This is a good thing to have if you screw up. It works kind of like goo off. It doesn't work as nice as the alcohol does with uh, epoxy. It doesn't work that way. It sort of has to sit on there, eat the glue away, and you just continually wipe it until the stuff is gone. So it's a good idea to not screw up. Don't add too much. Here we are, we're at the bottom of the wing. Let me check this top section real quick here to make sure this is right. Okay, looks good. Okay, that's one. Let me recheck. Recheck this. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. All are good. Just making absolutely certain. So here we go. I'm going to move it back just slightly.
And this ultra thin, it goes. It really gets soaked up in here. You don't have to add a bunch and it just goes in there and finds its target. And that is it. We wait for just a second. Let's turn it over and take a look at the top. Got it? Beautiful. No uh, funny business. Nice spacing. Uh huh. Perfect. Yes. Success. All right, so next item up for bids. I have got to prep these holes. I've got to establish, Let's see if you guys can see this a little better. I've got to establish some uh, threads on this. Right, there's a battery charged. What are you doing, Stu? Come on. We've uh, had this discussion uh, countless times. I'm making threads. Okay? Now, a drop, and I mean a drop. So today is the day Got a 50% chance of rain today, and it is Thursday, and that of course means Thursday Night Combat. By the way, if you take a look at our Facebook page, Thursday Night Combat, you will be able to follow uh, what we're doing and where we are doing this. If you want to join us, you can send us a message there and jump on board. There is really not too much, uh, too many other things that offer so much fun. As bashing your fellow RC <laughs> buddies out of the sky with a combat plane. It is, uh, it's excellent. I would not be flying wings at all if it were not from the, for the combat. Because quite frankly, you can get bored really quick with uh, flying a particular plane uh, all the time. And that combat makes that show so much more exciting so much more of a challenge. You've got your evasive maneuvers, your attack maneuvers, you're, you're using a lot of throttle management. There's no rudder in the mix, so it's not like it's uh, 3D excitement, but it is very exciting when you are um, bashing somebody else out of the sky. It's uh, a nice pleasure. All right, we've got to put some holes inside of these. Nice. And we have to prep. I have prepped this up. They gave you a guideline. The guideline was uh, 65 millimeters from point to point center. I know right now that's going to be off. On every single model I've ever built, it always seems to be off. So it goes. Uh, screw and washer through this ball joint and then it goes on to the top it goes through the top and I am going to have absolutely no slop 
as I do this. It's going to come out really nice. Mm-hmm. There's that section so far. Yay! That's what amazing. Could I use other stuff? If you've watched anything that I've built, you realize that you can use nail polish. It'll drop. Take me a ways here. See how loose that is? It's nice. It doesn't matter how tight this is, it really doesn't. But that's not going to go anywhere. So there's this. I'll power up, power up the radio and I'll make sure that this is absolutely center. Uh, here we go. We're going to go ahead. We've centered this. Put it in. Put my radio on. And now we are going to center this thing. That fits on beautifully. And any corrections that I uh, am going to make on this are going to be done manually with this as far as the corrections for lining up the wing. And you're wondering why that is. And the reason that is is because I'm using an AR400 which does not have enough channels. Now I could add another one, but I'm going to add a Y in here, which will do fine. And then I will just make the corrections for all of this to be even uh, manually. And then of course we'll get down to gauging the wings, etc. So at this point we're going to be looking at the edge of the wing here relative to this. And right now, as I look at it, as we both look at this, I could add tape on either side of this right here. A tape piece on top, a tape piece on bottom. You look at the wing straightness. See that? Nice and straight, even, flat. This will keep this thing in place while I'm doing my work over here attempting to make this fit in this hole and it is almost there it's never ever perfect Wing is still perfectly flat. I need to get you guys some better lighting. Flat. This is on. It's nice. It's tightened up. I can go ahead and take this take this stuff off now. We're going to set that over here. Nice. And this stuff, this, this plane is extremely light. I'm going to push it in until it stops. And there's the stopping point. Bring the wires through. There's a pin back here. See this pin? There's a pinhole, right? 
there and there is a peg inside of here and I did not have to install that which is great all right push the wing into position it's in there it's nice this has some very nice um, pieces that go with this to fasten on the wing it's these plastic screws I think that's great and they snap right in here screws hole and things would be great look at this thing is starting to shape up to look sweet you're feeling very sleepy and relaxed right here on Stu's channel.